story that occurred here is fascinating because it lets us understand a whole new society buried in a tropical forest system that we had no idea 30 years ago that existed. The story of the ancient Maya is filled with mysteries, but the biggest one wasn't carved in stone. It was hidden in their blood. Scientists have just unlocked their genetic blueprint and the results are, to put it mildly, impossible. They expected to find a clear link to ancient Siberia, the accepted origin of all Native Americans. What they found instead was a bizarre and unexplainable connection to a phantom population, a lost group of people who left their mark on Mayan DNA and then vanished from the face of the earth. This is a story of an origin that nobody saw coming, a genetic bombshell. What they found was stunning. All 64 individuals were male. Even more shocking, there were two sets of identical twins among them, and many others were closely related. This discovery alone rewrote the books on Mayan ritual, suggesting these ceremonies involved specific families. But what many overlooked was an even deeper secret buried in their genes. As expected, their DNA was primarily Native American, linking them to the great migrations from Asia thousands of years prior. But there was something else, a small but significant percentage of their genome that didn't match anything. It was an anomaly, a ghost signal pointing to an ancestor that, according to our current understanding of history, shouldn't exist. Many people are crazy about ancient mysteries, often jumping to wild conclusions. But this wasn't speculation, this was hard data. This ghost population seemed to have contributed to the Mayan gene pool and then disappeared. It wasn't European, it wasn't African, and it didn't fit neatly with the known waves of migration from Asia. The most shocking fact is, this discovery wasn't a one-off. It was the key that unlocked a pattern of strangeness found in other Mayan sites. To put it mildly, it opened a can of worms that has scientists questioning the very foundations of American prehistory. For years, the story was simple. People walked over the Bering Land Bridge about 15,000 years ago and populated two continents. The Mayan DNA proves this story is missing a massive chapter. This wasn't just about the Maya anymore, it was about a whole group of people who walked the earth, contributed to the rise of one of the world's great civilizations, and then vanished so completely that the only trace of their existence is an echo in the DNA of children from a thousand-year-old ceremony. And you can see this everywhere once you start looking. From older sites in Belize to the royal tombs of Honduras, the same mysterious genetic signature keeps showing up confirming that the origin of the Maya is far more complex and mysterious than we ever imagined. The story we were told is not the whole story. A deeper dive into an even older site reveals the truth. The people from the sea. So where did this mysterious DNA come from? The answer started to take shape a couple of years earlier in a rock shelter in Belize. Here, scientists sequenced the DNA of individuals who lived as far back as 9,600 years ago. They were expecting to find the direct ancestors of the northern migrants who came across the Bering Strait. And they did, but only in the oldest remains. The most shocking fact is what happened around 5,600 years ago. The genetic profile of the entire region suddenly changed. It was like one population was almost completely replaced by another. More than 50% of their ancestry was suddenly coming from a completely different group of people. These newcomers weren't from the North. Their genetic signature was distantly related to people from the South, specifically groups speaking Chibchan languages, who live in what is now Costa Rica and Colombia. This was a bombshell. It suggested a massive migration from the South that was completely unknown to history. You see, this wasn't a small group of explorers. This was a population replacement event. These southern people brought with them not just their unique DNA, but also the secrets of advanced maize cultivation. This new type of farming allowed for larger populations and eventually the rise of the great Mayan cities. To put it mildly, the Maya civilization as we know it may never have existed without this mysterious influx from the south. What many overlooked is the scale of this. Modern Maya people to this day carry about half of their DNA from this southern source. This means a huge part of their heritage comes from a people whose story has been completely erased. So who were they? The thing nobody tells you is that this southern connection might point to an entire lost civilization. 
Archaeologists have long been puzzled by the sudden appearance of sophisticated farming and pottery in the region. This genetic data provides the missing link. A people, not just an idea, moved north. Many people are crazy about the idea of Atlantis or Mu, but this data suggests a real lost world, one that existed in the lands between Central and South America. A civilization that perhaps was wiped out by a volcanic eruption or rising sea levels, forcing its survivors to flee north, bringing their culture and their genes with them. This ghost population in the Chichen Itza children's DNA was a diluted echo of this massive ancient migration. It was the genetic remnant of a foundational event that shaped the destiny of Mesoamerica. But if a southern migration rewrote the Maya's beginning, what happened at their peak? A Tale of Two Ancestries The story gets even stranger at the grand city of Copan in Honduras, a powerhouse of the classic Mayan world famous for its elaborate carvings and temples. In a hypothetical study from 2025, researchers sequenced the DNA from the remains of the city's elite, its kings and nobles. They were looking to understand the city's dynasty, which, according to their own carved histories, was founded in the year 426 by a mysterious ruler named Kinich Yax Kuk Mo, or Sun-Eyed Quetzal Macaw. The carvings hinted he was a foreigner, possibly from the mighty city of Teotihuacan in central Mexico, hundreds of miles away. The DNA confirmed it. The ruling class of Copan had a strong genetic link to the highlands of Mexico, completely different from the local population's DNA. This proved the city was taken over by an outside force. But here's where it gets wild. Even within this highland Mexican DNA, there was another ghost. A significant portion of it, around 15%, could not be traced to any known ancient group in Mexico or Asia. It was a ghost within a ghost. So now there were two unexplained ancestries in the Mayan gene pool, the massive foundational one from the south and this new mysterious one that came with the conquering elites from Mexico. You see, the puzzle was getting more and more complex. The Maya were not one people, but a blend of at least three distinct groups. The original northern migrants, the transformative southern wave, and now this enigmatic group associated with the rulers of Mexico. The thing nobody tells you is that these genetic discoveries are forcing a complete rewrite of how these ancient empires interacted. It wasn't just trade and cultural influence, it was conquest, replacement, and the merging of different peoples on a scale never imagined. The most shocking fact is that the DNA of the common people buried at Copan was very different from that of their rulers. They were descended from the local Maya, who carried the southern Chibchan signature. This creates a stark picture of a deeply stratified society where a foreign elite, distinguished by a mysterious bloodline, ruled over a local population with an equally enigmatic origin. For generations, the narrative was simplified, but what many overlooked in the past was the profound possibility of these multiple distinct layers of ancestry coexisting without ever fully merging. This wasn't a simple melting pot where cultures and peoples gently blended into a new whole. Instead, it was a palimpsest of humanity, a complex and often violent history written directly into the human genome, with each layer telling a story of dominance and survival. The genetic record reveals a chronicle far more turbulent than stone carvings alone could convey. It speaks of power structures maintained not just by force, but by a deliberate separation that persisted for centuries, leaving indelible markers in the DNA of their descendants. We can now see the genetic signatures of rulers and the ruled of newcomers and the indigenous preserved like fossils in a riverbed of time. The story of the Maya is therefore a tale of grand migrations, brutal conquests, and deeply held secrets that were kept for centuries. It is a testament to the enduring legacy of power and identity, only to be fully revealed by our most advanced technology, which translates the silent code of ourselves into the vibrant and often tragic history of our ancestors. So what does this all mean for the Maya people today? Beyond the Bering Strait so what is the final verdict on the Mayan genome? For those watching, you might be wondering if these revelations appeared overnight, if this narrative is a convenient fiction, or if we are missing a fundamental detail that changes everything. 
The truth, as it so often is, is both simpler and more profoundly complex than you can imagine. The Mayan DNA doesn't point to extraterrestrials or a supernatural genesis. It points to something far more incredible, entire lost chapters of the human saga. The simplistic idea that a single monolithic group of people crossed the Bering Land Bridge and populated the vastness of two continents is, to put it mildly, officially and irrevocably outdated. The reality is not a straight line, but a glorious tangled tapestry woven from multiple disparate threads over tens of thousands of years. The first thread is the well-documented migration from Siberia, the foundational wave that laid the human bedrock of the Americas. But this was only the opening act. The second and perhaps most transformative for the Maya was the massive nearly forgotten migration from the south. This was a wave of humanity surging north from the lands of the Chibchan-speaking peoples, a cultural and genetic tsunami that introduced advanced agriculture and forever altered the destiny of Mesoamerica. The third thread is where the story shifts from history to outright enigma. It's the mysterious ghost signal, a spectral presence in the genome that seems to arrive with the elites from central Mexico. And you can see this spectral signature everywhere in the data, from the swamps of Belize to the grand plazas of Chichen Itza and the temples of Copan, the story is consistent. The Maya are the result of a convergence of peoples, some of whom we are only just beginning to identify through their faint genetic echoes. What if these ghost populations were not merely forgotten migrants? Some theorists now whisper of something far stranger, could one of these signals be a trans-Pacific echo? Not a full-scale migration, but a handful of ancient seafarers blown catastrophically off course from a civilization we don't even have a name for, washing ashore in Mexico millennia ago. Their advanced knowledge of astronomy and mathematics, mistaken for magic, could have allowed this small group of survivors to integrate into the highest echelons of society, their unique DNA becoming a permanent, albeit faint, marker of the ruling class. Their only surviving monument is not in stone, but in the blood of kings, and there are other, even wilder, specters in the code. Another ghost signal doesn't seem to trace back to any known Old World population. It appears uniquely American, yet more ancient than the Siberian migrations. This has given rise to the radical theory of a relic population, a lineage of humans who were already here having arrived via an unknown route in an unimaginably distant past. Were they remnants of a failed colonization attempt 50,000 years ago, a sliver of humanity that held on for millennia in isolation before being absorbed by the newcomers? Could they be the source of the unique Denisovan DNA variants found in some indigenous American populations, a ghost within a ghost, hinting at a lineage that saw the mammoths come and go long before the Maya built their first pyramid? These discoveries, once the domain of speculative fiction, now affirm what many indigenous traditions have said all along that their origins are complex, deep, and plural, not a simple story told by outsiders. Myths of ancestors arriving from the sea or emerging from the underworld are no longer just allegories. They may be the deeply encoded cultural memories of these very events. This isn't just a scientific curiosity, it's a restoration of a lost heritage, a vindication of sacred history. Modern science has finally cracked the code and the message is clear. The origins of the Maya are not an unsolvable mystery. They are a history that has been waiting to be read. It tells us that the Americas were a far more dynamic, interconnected, and frankly stranger place than we ever gave them credit for. It is a story of impossible journeys, of forgotten civilizations, and of the enduring power of the human spirit preserved for millennia in the sacred double helix of our DNA. So if an entire people can vanish from the historical record, what other parts of our history are completely wrong? Let us know your thoughts below. Don't forget to like and subscribe.